Welcome back. I'm Rick Sanchez. Abby Boudreaux is going to be staying with us here. Uh, but after watching that report, you can't help but feel for those Marines with breast cancer. And imagine how difficult that must be for them just to tell their stories. Uh, their case seems pretty convincing. Uh, that it was, in fact, contaminated drinking water at Camp Lejeune that may have caused this condition for them. Major General Carl Jensen is the commanding general of the Marine Corps Installations East. He's good enough to join us now from uh, Washington. Major, thank you for being with us, sir. Thank you. Good to be here. Let me ask you what, as you probably heard me just uh, allude to, most Americans watching us right now are probably thinking. These men allege that they're not being taken care of by the Corps. What is your response to them? Well, first off, our hearts, our thoughts, our prayers are with all those who are suffering, both those who you've highlighted in, in your show the past two days uh, and those you haven't. The Marine Corps has invested approximately $15 million to study this issue. We have funded studies most recently with the uh, National Research Council mm -hmm. from the Academy of Sciences to try and determine a causal relationship. I know you're intimate with, with this story, so you know how important that is to establish a service-related disability for these men and women who are suffering. But what about, what about, what about, and I, I don't, sir, I certainly don't mean to interrupt, but cutting to the chase here, I heard those men say to you, and I think that's what I heard, right, Abby, that you, the Marine Corps, knew at least five years into that water having a problem there at the base, and nothing was done about it, nothing was said. Do you not agree that that in and of itself makes you liable? Here's what happened. That water was tested, retested. We were in full compliance with the Environmental Protection Agency regulations. There were three studies that were done examining all of the actions associated over that five-year period from 80 to 85. One was conducted by the EPA, another mm -hmm. one by GAO, and a third was a Commandant of the Marine Corps directed fact-finding uh, session that involved uh, outside independent agencies. All three of those determined that the Marine Corps acted appropriately. Is that so right, General, Abby? Is that, let, let, so me bring, let me bring Abby into here, just, just, just to counter you, sir, to, respectfully, of course. So, General, it, are you saying that the Marine Corps does not have any responsibility here? The Marine Corps, I believe, fulfilled its requirements under the EPA, using EPA guidelines. You know, frankly, here in, and I, I don't mean to sound like an apologist, and I don't want to come across like one, but, but we're looking at events through a 21st century prism. This whole notion of, of environmental sensitivities and water sampling, this is very new at the time. And but we, sir, but, but General, yes. just with all due respect, I mean, at that time you knew um, that, that it was, of course, dangerous to, to spill toxins in toxic chemicals into the ground at that point. You can't possibly say that just because the EPA didn't have a standard, that you didn't know that it was wrong at that point. We, my, we, weren't, we weren't dumping toxic chemicals into the ground? De really? Degreasers and things like that, and, and we do know that that is a fact. We were properly disposing of them. We even talked to a Marine who we interviewed who said that they were dumping that stuff into the ground because that's what they were told to do at that time even though it didn't feel right. At, at, at what time, ma'am? When it, in, the, in the 70s, 70s, 80s. Beyond, beyond all of these details, I think what people want to know the most is what do you have to say to these Marines right now who are out there, who some of them you know, have a year left to live? What can the court do for them? I understand completely. We think because of the, the critical nature of complying with the statutory requirement that the Veterans Administration has 
to prove a service-related disability, that's the nexus we need to go after. That's why in the most recently completed study, we were trying to determine whether or not these illnesses could be attributed to drinking the water at Camp Lejeune. When do you think, can you give us a timetable? When do you think you will have an answer, a definitive answer for what these men say they are convinced because of the fact that there were now 27 of them there and they've all contracted the very same situation, some of which are soon to die, according to their doctors, when will you have an answer for them? Because they're going to start to feel like they're being pushed aside. I, I understand completely, and I wish I had a great answer for you. I don't. The yeah. fact of the matter is when science permits us to do so, these patriots are looking for closure on this. Yeah. Yes, and they are. The Marine Corps is looking for the same thing. Yes, they are. Sir, you're courageous to come here and take the heat. I know it's a difficult situation for the Corps, but it's obviously a very difficult situation for those men on whose behalf we have told this story. My thanks to a you, sir. Absolutely. Heart-rending. I appreciate it. And, Abby, thanks so much. Good reporting. Let us know if anything changes on this, and we'll continue to stay on top of it. Okay, absolutely.